Hello, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I've read in February. It has been a minute since I sat down to film. I've just been honestly just going through it and it's it's okay. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Anyway, um, that is so besides the point. I am gonna first go into some stats. These are only for books that I completed in February. So I completed nine books. I DNF'd two books. I read one translated book. It was translated from Swedish. I read from two BIPOC authors, two male authors, five female authors, and then one non-binary author, but I read two of their books. And I got eight of the books I read from the library, one from Kindle Unlimited, and I read zero books that I owned this month. So that might be a goal for next month, but I'm killing it in terms of like, I didn't really buy too many books last month. I, I don't know, I used my library is what I'm trying to say. And I, I ate that. Okay, so I'm gonna first go into my two DNFs of the month, just to get them out of the way. So the first one is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. And I think I got maybe 10 to 15% of the way into this. This is a horror novel. Um, I was listening to the audiobook, and it's about this house where something happened and this girl, grew up there and so you're so, you're sort of like flashing back to when she grew up in the house and then now when she's like telling this journalist about her life in the house but what I didn't like was that I don't know I get very easily annoyed by children in audiobooks especially and the voices for the kids were just so annoying like the audiobook narrator it would be like the the main girl and her sister but they're like 12 or 13 and the voice that the audiobook narrator did for these children was horrible and i just wasn't vibing with it on audiobook i went through a real time of like thriller horror fatigue this month and that really shows especially in audiobooks i was especially not loving that which brings me to the other book I DNF'd, which was also an audiobook and also a thriller, which is The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis. And this one, I actually liked the beginning of a little bit more than A Head Full of Ghosts. I feel like I'm a lot more likely to probably pick this one up later. Again, I think I was maybe, I was maybe like 20% of the way into this book. And it was fine. It, it was just fine it was um it's about this group of girlfriends that are all like recently 40 and then one of them it's their birthday and they're turning 40 and one of the girls has a grandmother that lives in the chateau in provence i think like south of france and they all go and some things happen and you find out at the very beginning actually that the grandmother dies so yeah and you get perspectives from i would assume all of the girls in the group because i only listened to the first three or so chapters but they were all from a different perspective of one of the women in the group so yeah interesting and i think it could be cool but i'm just like i'm really picky with thrillers i just find that i usually feel so middle of the road about them and that i just don't really care that much about the characters and what happens and i just feel like they all kind of blur together to me sometimes and i was just really not in the mood to have that sort of reading experience which is why i dnf'd that now to go on to books that i actually finished i'm gonna go in order chronologically of how i read them except for one of them the first one and this is a book that i read for uni and i wanted to just kind of put it at the front and kind of just get it out of the way i do want to talk about it but i i will go into all the fun ones in a second because this one i actually didn't love that much so i read the wonderful adventures of mary sequel in many lands by mary sequel and let me just say mary sequel she's sick okay she's really really cool she was a black woman born in jamaica that lived in england for a time and then worked as a medic during the crimean wars and her story is so interesting and it's kind of like a the book is sort of a 
autobiography but it's very focused around her work during these wars as opposed to other times in her life. Her first chapter covers in a page or two like her life growing up, how she got married, and then how her husband died. That kind of stuff was just sort of like breezed over and then we got to the war stuff which was interesting but it was how do I say this like it was a lot more cool to think about and discuss maybe than it was to read a lot of the book just felt like the same sort of things over and over but to be fair to Miss Mary that is kind of what war is I think what she would do is that she would go to like places where there was fighting going on and then she'd set up like a little inn and she'd be a medic and go out into the field but then also like have an inn where she served dinner every night at the same time and she's just like work work working all the time and her work was so valuable she saved so many lives she is such a cool person and something I will say is that while I found a lot of the book a little bit dense and kind of boring she's actually a very skilled writer and there were some passages i just found honestly stunning i'm glad i read it i did you know read it for uni but i wouldn't reread it but i'm also glad that i know who she is now if that makes sense so yeah i gave that a 3.5 out of 5. so the first book that i read in february was the winners by frederick bachman this is the third book in the beartown trilogy and it was fine i okay let me explain so the beartown trilogy is it starts with the book beartown and really i kind of feel like that's the only one you need to read the book follows a hockey town in sweden that are obsessed with hockey because they are a hockey town so their like youth teams are everything to them and the whole town revolves around hockey people live breathe eat sleep hockey okay it's all hockey all the time a major event of the first book is that one of the team's hockey stars rapes a young woman in the town and this is a very like trigger warning because that is like a very central plot point to the whole series. I love Bachman's writing. These are the only books I've read by him. I would love to try some of his other works. You really, really deeply care about these characters. Um, they feel like real people. There are so many characters and perspectives that you follow throughout the town. You find yourself caring about each one. However, what I'll say about this book was that it just didn't really need to be there. And I think it's the same with the second book, which was called Us Against You. A lot of it was repetition of what had happened in the first book. There was lots of like, it was just restated over and over again, which sometimes I don't mind if like I've forgotten what happened in the first book, but I hadn't. And it was repeated so many times that I could never forget if I wanted to. <laughs> they didn't feel like their own stories, these second two books. It didn't feel like anything new. It just felt like a... I don't know. I don't know. It didn't, it didn't feel substantial or like it could really stand on its own as a good book. It kind of felt like it was relying on the emotions and stuff I felt in the first book. Which is really unfortunate. I do like, it did make me cry, okay? Like I do still like the characters and it was good to see where they all ended up, although it was heartbreaking. It just didn't hit the way that I would have wanted it to. So yeah, also 3.5 stars for the winners. Next I read For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing on audio. This was interesting. I, I forgot that I read this, genuinely. When I was like doing my notes for this video, I forgot that I read this, but here we are. So this is about a guy named Teddy. He is a teacher at this like private school and he kind of just um, fiddles. He fiddles in people's lives and does things for their own good that, you know, some may consider invasive, um, psychotic, or just cruel, 
but you know he thinks he is basically the best and that he knows best and he's doing the best for everyone around him and you see how that kind of ruins some people's lives this was pretty good i read what was it i read my darling wife was that what it's called i think my lovely wife i think anyway i read that book that is also by samantha downing last year and i really loved it i like don't usually like thrillers that much as i've said before but i really liked that one so i was excited about this book and I will say it was a really quick read. I was invested when I read it. There were lots of twists that I didn't see coming. However, I just didn't care about the characters the way that I would have wanted to because I'm a really character-driven reader. And the plot, while it was interesting, I didn't really root for anyone. And so it was a little bit hard to, I don't know, feel invested in the story. 3.5 out of 5. For that book lots of mid books this month unfortunately however then i read a much better book which is no exit by taylor adams i'm not going to talk too much about it here because i do have a whole reading vlog it's my jante's inferno reading vlog where i had to read things for specific prompts and i read no exit for that and i loved it 4.5 stars so this is about this girl named derby Derb, Derb, Darby. Her name is Darby, and she is so cool, and I love her. And she basically is in uni at I think University of Colorado Boulder, and she finds out that her mom is dying from cancer, and she is driving across <laughs> across these mountains, this snowy landscape to get to her mother and potentially see her for the last time before she goes into this surgery. But there is an insane snowstorm. She has to stop at this rest stop in the middle of the mountains. And there are some other people at this rest, rest, rest stop. There are some other people at this rest stop that, you know, at first she's like, okay, they're kind of cool, whatever. I can spend the next however many hours with them. And then she goes out to check for her cell signal to try to call her sister. And on her way back into the rest stop, she sees a child in a cage in the back of a car. So someone at the rest stop has kidnapped a child and she has to figure out who. And it is so stressful. This is like, I was on the edge of my seat to the point where I was anxious reading this book, but it was th good. That was good because that's the intended effect. And Darby is such a good main character. She is smart. She is resourceful. She's also a little bit unstable emotionally because of what's happening with her mom. I just loved it. I loved it. I really want to read The Last Word by Taylor Adams because that came out last year and I think everyone really loved it. But I've been wanting to read this book for so long and I loved it and I want to see the film there's also a film. The next book I read was an audiobook of The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sengu Mandana and I really really wanted to like this and I didn't like it very much. Anyway so this is about a girl I couldn't tell you her name. Oh Mika. Mika Moon and she's a witch and basically in this world that is just our world but with witches she lives in England. All of the witches they meet once every like three months or something to kind of just chat and make sure no one knows their little witchy secret but no one they all stay really far away from each other because they're like it's a little bit dangerous if we're together too much like strange magical things can occur so basically let's just not let's not chat let's not be friends and so mika's grown up feeling very very lonely oh also add to the fact the other reason why she's lonely is that apparently Every witch ever in this version of Earth is an orphan. So, so yeah, she, she grows up, she's like very, very much alone. And it's difficult because, you know, whenever she forms any sort of relationship at all, she has to hide a massive part of who she is from the world. And 
her way of kind of coping with this is starting a YouTube channel and making witchy videos, but she kind of relies on the fact that like everyone thinks witchcraft is fake and stuff. So one day someone watches her video and they're like, hey, can you come be like a tutor for these three little witches that we have at our house? Please help us, please. And so she goes. And there's a grumpy kind of librarian guy there, which is nice, I guess. And the kids are fine. Actually, no, another instance where the kids kind of annoyed me. Maybe it's an audiobook issue or maybe I just suck and I don't like kids. Which, to be fair, I don't want kids. And I don't, I guess I don't actually like kids that much. Except for babies. Like, you know, like before they can talk. I don't know. I think I like kids in real life. But just not in books, maybe. I don't... Anyway, that's besides the point. I did not like this. It was fine. It was fine. It was just so middle of the road, so average to me that I just didn't care. And this book has so much hype and I really, really wanted to like it. Yeah, let me... I'll read my note. So I said, I really wanted to like this, but it all just felt very meh. I did not love any of the characters except maybe this guy called Ian who I he's cool um but the characters in general were just kind of all right the girls annoyed me I think I might just hate reading about children wow I, I should have known and the plot was uneventful I have to agree with that the setting and the atmosphere were lovely to be fair however the romance was very lackluster in my opinion and I just want to see more of it and there for there to be more yearning and angst I feel like we were kind of told not shown a lot of things like Mika and this guy they start spending a lot of time together and they're just the book is just sort of like and they hung out a lot and they did have moments of like their banter was all right but there were some things that were just so cheesy where Mika was like we're all made of stardust and the guy was like wow I'm like in love with you that's so adorable and I was just like okay I don't know, something felt really cheesy about it and a little bit like, I don't know. I don't know, it just didn't really do it for me, that relationship. The book did have a bit of a twist towards the end, which was actually quite intriguing, but the rest of the ending was so predictable that I was just a bit bored the whole way through. I think that the twist was interesting when it happened and then the solution was very obvious as to how it would be solved. And when I realized it, I was just like, okay, cool. Like, I feel like I just didn't really care. Yeah, so disappointed about that. I just really wanted to like it and didn't. So that is The Very Secret Society of of regular witches. Next I read Night's Edge by Liz Karen. I love this. I love it, love it. I also talked about it in my John Jan Tay's Inferno vlog and it was another 4.5 out of 5 read. This is about a girl named Mia. I think Mia and she lives in this world where there has been this pandemic that sort of causes vampirism and we see her life during two different time periods one is 2010 when her mother is turned into a vampire by her abusive boyfriend and we have to kind of figure this all out this is when the sarah virus which is the virus that causes vampirism is just kind of starting and a lot of people don't know what's happening and then we go to current day where this is very much a thing. Mia and her mom are living kind of undercover. Her mom is feeding off of her blood every day and they're flying under the radar, but they're not really allowed to make any friends because they don't want anyone finding out their secret, which was interesting. And then things start happening in the present day that 
are a bit concerning. Mia's mom starts getting texts from someone and Mia feels a little bit betrayed by this because she's like, well, you said I couldn't have any friends. And then Mia also meets this girl named Jade and gets a crush on her, but is kind of unsure about whether or not she can even pursue a relationship with her life being the way it is. I loved this. The relationship between Mia and her mother was so complex and so dynamic and interesting and sad and just genuinely is so like I never felt like anything was kind of skated over. I just felt like the novel really wasn't afraid to address this relationship and all of its complexity and I really appreciated that and that for me was the highlight of this book. I am so excited to read the sequel. Just in general this book had so many pros for me like the atmosphere the writing the character development was chef's kiss like so good so loved that next i read heartstopper volume 5 by alice oseman i also talk about this in the jante's inferno reading vlog so those are the three books i read for it this night's edge and no exit i read this in one sitting it was so good if you haven't heard of heartstopper this is a graphic novel series about Nick and Charlie, who are two boys in the UK that meet and fall in love and form a relationship. And it's just so cute and heartwarming and lovely and genuinely just makes me smile and like giggle the whole time I'm reading it. This one in particular, I really liked. We are kind of tackling Nick and Charlie facing Nick's imminent graduation. And so Nick is gonna be moving away for uni most likely. And they're kind of grappling with that. And then also taking the next step in their relationship physically. And I just loved it. There were so many cute, kind of funny, awkward moments in this. And yeah, and also Alice Osman's art is just so lovely. Like, just look at them. Look at them. Yeah, I loved it and I'm so excited for the next volume, which is when it's gonna be wrapping up. I'm sad that it's ending, but I'm excited. I then read The Heartstopper Yearbook, also by Alice Oseman. And this, I checked out from my library, but I had to return it, unfortunately, because someone else had checked it out. So this is basically a nonfiction book about Alice Oseman's process, writing, the Heartstopper series. They talk a little bit about, you know, early art kind of forms of Nick and Charlie. So we see some initial drawings and how the characters have evolved over time. They talk about just the process of writing in general and where the story came from, as well as like fun little things like little character pages that have maybe what song each character is listening to and their likes and dislikes and cute stuff like that. I really liked it. It was very cute. I don't know. It was it was just fun. Ugh. The last book I read this month was another mid book and a thriller. Surprise, surprise. This is None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. Another big disappointment actually because a lot of people really like this book. And I was excited about the audiobook specifically because it has a whole cast of characters, but I hate to say it, um, parts of the audiobook I actually don't think were well produced. It's actually just one small thing. So basically this book is kind of multimedia in the sense that there's podcast clips in it, there's, you know, normal like prose writing and then other stuff but there would be segments in the audiobook of this guy asking people questions to gather info for this documentary on Netflix that he's making about the situation in this book. And the interviewer's voice was always so quiet that even like on full volume, I couldn't really hear him that well. And then the other person's voice would be kind of crystal clear, but then there would also be background noise of like birds chirping or people walking in the background. And it was like, how am I expected to hear the voice of the interviewer around all this other noise? And also, I don't know, it was it was just kind of bizarre because I was like, the rest of this is like so well put together, I feel like, and people recommend the audiobook so highly. But 
why is this man's voice so silent when he's asking kind of important questions? <laughs> that was kind of a nitpicky thing, but it really bugged me because it, it happened quite frequently throughout the book. Like this happened several times. Anyway, so this is about these two women and they are birthday twins. They meet semi-randomly at a restaurant and it's their birthday night and they're just like, hey, it's your birthday too, OMG. One of the women, her name is Alex Summers and she has a podcast where she talks to like accomplished women that have overcome the odds in some way. And Elsie, the other woman, is very strange. There's lots of suspicious things going on with Elsie. Like she, her husband is like 30 years older than her, groomed her as a child and now they're married and she has a daughter that ran away from home and then a daughter that lives at home but that she never sees and that only eats baby food. Lots of weird things going on. But anyway, Elsie is like, Alex, what if you made a podcast about me and I told you my story. And then she paints this whole story about her life and like, it's very woe is me. And then things start happening, people start dying. You can't really believe anything that's been said. And it was all just fine. It was just fine. I, I just found it so mediocre. I know that this plot is gonna be super forgettable to me. I only really remember sort of what happened because I just finished it like a week or two ago. None of the reveals I felt like were super shocking to me and I think that this book had a big issue with the fact that you actually never figured out what was true. Like, I know the title is None of This Is True, but it was at the point where you finish the book and you still don't actually know who's telling the truth about what and there are so many things that are unanswered, which is not something I usually hate in books. But in this instance, it just made me feel like there was no reason to care about the story in the first place. If no one's telling the truth and I don't care about the characters, then why do I care what the truth is? That was my big complaint here. And the thing about the guy in the audiobook, I don't know. I just found it so mid and yeah, unfortunately this month in general, was a bit mid but i'm hoping for more good reads this month in march i am going to be doing a fantasy reading vlog which i'm so excited about it's just my life has been kind of a living hell lately it's um th that's not an exaggeration like things have just been horrible <laughs> so i'm hoping to have the time actually to read some fantasy books because i'm really excited about the ones that i'm hoping to get to in that vlog if you are still here maybe leave a Leave a orange heart for Heartstripper Volume 5 because it's got like an orange kind of theme. Yeah, do that. Let me know down in the comments below some of your favorite books that you read this month, some of your least favorite books you read this month. If you've read any of the books that I've talked about in this video, I'd love to know what you thought about them because um, I know a lot of the books I talked about specifically like None of This Is True and Very Secret Society of a Regular Witches, a lot of people really love. Um, so I'd just love to hear any thoughts that you have and yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in a new video very soon. Bye.